Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. Our guest this week on CT Small Business Toolkit is Liz Jaswick. She's a speaker, strategist, and author. Her latest book is Service Excellence is as easy as pie, and pie stands for perception is everything. It's published by Firestarter, and we're going to be going over some of the service myths that are out there that a lot of people buy into, and it can lead to major problems for you. So, Liz, thanks very much for being with us. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Let's talk about how important perception is before we get to some of the myths. Obviously, right now, getting customers in a uh, struggling economy is a lot harder than it is in a booming economy. So how important is it to not only create a good perception, but to fix it if you didn't do such a good job the first time around? Perception really is everything. When we talk about service, it's how people feel. So sometimes people want to say things like, well, we have the best product, or uh, if you're in a restaurant, we have the best steak. But if people don't feel as though you are concerned about them or that you want to make sure that their service is personal, then they're not going to have a great experience. And and really, service is about creating great experiences, not just delivering quality material or services. It's a combination of both. And I think a lot of organizations spend a lot of time on the quality and not as much time on the perception. And so that's where we sometimes get a little bit mixed up. And how does the customer typically look at a business in terms of that special relationship? How unique, how memorable does it really have to be? It needs to be unique and memorable. It needs to be personal, but it doesn't have to be big. One of the things that I discovered in writing this book, I wanted to do a chapter on wow. And to me, wow sounds like, over the top, maybe once a year, and unattainable for most businesses. But as I started writing the book and doing some research, what I really discovered is wow is not big. It's very, very personal. So it can be something as simple as um, a hotel taking a look at your um, luggage tag and letting the person at the desk know, kind of by walkie-talkie, Liz Jaswick is checking in so that when I step up, they say, oh, Miss Jaswick, we've been expecting you. Ah, very good. That's just a very personal thing. It's not, doesn't cost a lot of money, but it creates a very, very nice perception. What's a good way to train for that? I think the best way to train is, I, I believe in telling stories, because I think the more that we can talk about Things like the uh, story I just told you about the luggage tag, people say, well, that doesn't seem very hard. So I, I think that that's important. I also think bringing back stories from our customers helps train the staff. So when you get a nice letter and they say, you know, they were just so thrilled that you took the extra time to do a demonstration of the phone for them, people really are like, really? That's what they remembered? So I think we have to let our uh, teams know that it's a lot of little things that add up over and over again. I think that's the best way to uh, uh, keep that training constant. And how contagious is it when a, a business realizes that something they considered really incidental almost made a big difference in the impression of the customer? Does that inspire to make sure that happens as often as possible? I believe it does if the organization is, is led by individuals that understand how important it is to share that and celebrate it and embrace it. So sometimes I go into organizations that are doing great work, but they don't do those things. They don't talk about them. They don't, they don't share those touching moments. They don't um, celebrate them. And we, what you can find is people doing great work and not feeling great about it, and that to me is, is a tragedy. We're talking with Liz Jaswick, a renowned speaker, strategist, and author. Her book is Service Excellence is as Easy as Pie. Perception is Everything. And Liz, I think a lot of what we've already said is going to be pretty refreshing to folks because as we get into some more of these myths, one of the big myths that kind of incorporates a few of these is that, oh, man, this is going to be a lot of work to perhaps not make that big of a difference. But we've already established that that's not necessarily the case, but there's a couple specific ways that can get our mindset going in the wrong direction here. Uh, Myth number three, for example, asking the customer how we can help only makes more work for us, uh, and telling people how long things will take is a bad idea because people don't like to wait. So 
Those are relatively easy things most of the time, depending on what the business is. The help they might want might not be all that extravagant. So um, how do we get into that rut and how do we get out of it? Well, we sometimes, not sometimes, we often have to change behaviors. So with the, you know, asking people, is there anything else I can do for you? I work with organizations all the time who say, there is no way we can do this. We're too busy already. Uh, Leaders say, we can't even ask our team members to do one more thing. But what we're trying to do is change a perception. So if I'm with a if I'm with a customer, and they run into maybe a three more of my team members, and all four of us say, "Is there anything else I can do for you?" And all four times the customer says, "No, really, I'm all right. No, everything is good. No, things are fine." Well, then when asked afterwards, did the staff treat you as an individual? Were they concerned about your special needs? The perception is, well, yes, because when I asked three or four times, I said everything was okay. Sometimes you actually have to do the behavior and see the results so that you can then understand that it works. Sometimes what we try to do is we try to talk them into it. We try to say, oh, this is really good, it's a good thing, you should try it, and we don't enforce that behavior change. If you don't change behaviors, you will never change results. So once you change the behaviors, then the team members start to see the results, and the results are what get them out of the rut and motivated to, to, to do the behavior over and over again. Let's look at a couple more here, Liz, and this is probably in the department of people are often resistant to change. Yep. Myth number two, the data supports our current strategies, so we shouldn't change. And you uh, provide an example there about when you were working at a hospital. Uh, people thought that it was too loud at night, and right. uh, you know you looked at the decibel levels, and things seemed to be fine, but it was just a, a perception issue that you've had to figure out a solution to. Exactly. Again, kind of going on that, you know, one coin of the experience, one side is quality, one side is perception. In the story that you're re- referencing, we're talking about a hospital that had issues with uh, patients thinking the hospital was noisy at nighttime. So the folks that want to really do the quality part, the measurement part, they did. They actually brought in a decibel meter reader thing, and it showed that the noise levels were not loud. But the patient's perception was that it was. So I advised them. I said, you could do one of two things. You could either tell all your patients when they get admitted, this is not a noisy hospital, and we have the meter readings to prove it. I said, or you could try lowering your lights at 8 p.m. This particular organization lowered their lights, their hallway lights, in in the unit at 11 o'clock, which is kind of a traditional change of shift time in healthcare. When they lowered them at 8, the perception from the patients was that as it was darker, that it was quieter. doesn't make sense on any level, and if you're a scientist, this would make you crazy. But the perception changed when the lights actually became lower. And those are the things you have to kind of find by trial and error. Myth number one is uh, very interesting because I think a lot of people would probably believe this in their gut. Only crabby people fill out surveys. So when you have the suggestion box... It's all the complaints. Okay, these people are never going to be satisfied. Why are we even bothering with the suggestion box? But you say it's, it really is important to have that because those might not even be the people you really need to listen to. I have found, I've been doing this now for over 20 years, the organizations that are struggling the most, you know, that are in the bottom of the barrel, still only have about 10% of their folks ranking them extremely low. I, AKA the crabby people or the people who are unhappy. The difference between organizations that excel with service and the ones that just kind of get by is that the ones that excel do a better job of getting to that excellence or very good versus good. Most people don't just, you know, just don't, you know, slam you. The average customer ranks you average, and so if they're not, their perception is not something that's really exceptional or they don't have a great experience, they tend to rate you as average. And it's not the difference between people who are terribly unhappy and people who are delighted. It's between people who think you're okay and people who are delighted. Real quick, uh, overall, there's a lot of talk about engagement and, and personal experiences we've talked about today throughout the business world. Do you get the sense that most businesses are, are getting this and are moving in the right direction or, or not? I would say not. Really? 
Uh, unfortunately, I think some people try a lot of bells and whistles, and again, that's not really what folks want. I think it's um, a hard thing to make a commitment to. I think we all could rattle off the organizations that do a great job consistently. Uh, yeah, I fly Southwest Airlines. I think they do a great job. Marriott, uh, Disney. Unfortunately, though, I don't think it is the norm. And I think because of a lot of these myths and excuses, that's what really holds people, um, organizations back. Where can folks learn more about you and your work, Liz? If they um, go to my website, L-I-Z-J-A-Z, LizJazz.com, there are video clips there, um, descriptions of my books, and information on the programs that uh, I deliver to organizations. LizJazz.com. Liz Jaswick, thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you. Liz Jaswick is a renowned speaker, strategist, and author. She is the author of numerous books. The most recent is Service Excellence is as Easy as Pie, Perception is Everything. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for CT Small Business Toolkit. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit. Be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com, and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.